Oh my God, Spencer, thank you so much. Hey. You've allowed me to reconnect with my people. Love the it. mics. The mics. The mic! Make sure to subscribe. Where's Logan? And where are the camera people? Wow. Wow, this feels weird. One year has passed since last time I made a video for this channel. Wow, I'm back. The year, as you guys know, started off on a really sour note. The video viewed over six million times. And YouTube star Logan Paul. Then it kind of took a turn that nobody could have ever predicted. But it is the start of a new Logan Paul. And it ended in a way that none of us could have ever really dreamed that it would end in with me kind of moving out from the East Coast, moving into the Maverick house. Oh! oh my us starting impulsive the number one podcast in the world holy shit oh, 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 oh. Oh. and just being a part of this team now being a part of team maverick so all in all 2018 was a year of really intense highs really intense lows uh but we got through it and now we're here in a brand new year but i'm sure you're wondering now like why is he making a video one year later I think I wanna just take a chance to clear the air about a lot of things. Talk a little bit about who I am, the role I play here at the house, get over some of the bullshit that I've been seeing because a lot of it is bullshit. So one of the main questions I see all the time is who is Mike? How did he meet Logan? Like, why is he at the house? So I'm 33 years old. I'm from a small town in Connecticut. A lot of this stuff you can find online. I'm sure Famous Birthdays or whatever has that stuff, but I've been doing brand partnerships and social media for Lovesack and for other brands for the past five years just working a lot in that industry with influencers, celebrities, athletes. I met Logan in 2016 at Travis Pastrana's house. You guys probably remember that vlog with Roman Atwood. <laughs> And then after that, we kind of remained friends. We hung out at Sundance, we hung out at Coachella. And then after Tokyo happened, I kind of started to be even more of a friend to him, more of an advisor, a big brother, a day-to-day, -day, his right-hand man, whatever you want to call it, in the last kind of six to 12 months and, and, and be a part of all of that growth. It's just been incredible to watch him go from the person that I knew when I met him to who he is today. It's like two completely different people. So at the end of the day, I'm one of his best friends. Uh, I'm a business advisor. I'm a co-star and just act as another person in his life to help support the, the Maverick Enterprise. Another thing I see a lot is uh, you're like riding Logan's dick for clout, which, you know, obviously is hilarious to me, hilarious to Logan. We don't pay attention to a lot of that stuff, but I want to clear it up anyways. Before I met Logan, I had an awesome job, an awesome career. I, you know, still own property in Connecticut. I was kind of good before I met him. He knows that. That was one of the, the things that we kind of bonded on. I had my own thing going. He had his own thing going. It wasn't like a, a blood sucker type of scenario that you might see in Hollywood you know we both had really cool things going that could help each other in different ways at the end of the day uh, Logan and I just have this like brotherly relationship that is hard to explain and even harder to understand for people who aren't a part of it it does a ton for both his work my work and just kind of our, our lives in general and so we don't really think about it too much I'm definitely not riding any kind of dicks for clout I can assure you that much I'll be honest with you all the followers and, and everything is nice and it's cool kind of seeing my own brand grow Grow, but like I'm not monetizing it. I'm not making money off my followers uh, yet at least we're, we're pretty much brothers and, and that's kind of what it is at the end of the day Here's another big one. You made Logan and Chloe break up. Uh, this is so false I'm sure you guys remember me being kind of the third wheel on their dates um, On like swans and like at dinners and shit like that. None of that was planned like I was friends with both of them. We were in a big group chat. They would text me, yo, we're doing this, like come through. I literally love both of them with all my heart. And I never told Logan to break up with Chloe. I wasn't even in California when that breakup happened. I was still back in New York. Me and Logan kind of joke about it from time to time, but I honestly had nothing to do with that breakup. It's none of my business. It's really none of anybody else's business why that happened. Uh, I can assure you that had nothing to do with me. So another thing people ask about, I know I've mentioned in like passing in like podcasts and maybe in vlogs, I've been through some stuff in my life um, and people have asked me and DM me kind of like to talk about what that stuff was I don't want to get into it too much in detail today, but um, I do want to touch on it So basically from the age of 16 years old until about 26 years old I fought a really really bad addiction with Oxycontin and heroin I was prescribed Oxycontin after a skiing injury I broke my femur the biggest bone in your body um, when I was about 16 years old and that kind of cycled into a 10-year just 
battle with um, addiction with Oxycontin, heroin, and every other drug under the sun. Um, it's really a miracle that I'm still sitting here talking in front of a camera, even alive at all and breathing um, is really just a, a testament to God. In July of this year, I just celebrated nine years clean. Some of the things that drove me into that addiction or, or helped fuel it, my anxiety, depression, some of those things are still visible and things that I deal with every single day that I fight with exercise and eating right and um, sleeping and all of those kind of things surrounding myself with the right people. I will put out a book later this year that's currently sitting with editors and publishers about my addiction, about the struggles that kind of almost took my life. So I won't touch too, too much on it today, but I'm really excited to share that story and excited to share the story of how I got past it and not only survived and was able to continue living, but really just strive and be all that I could be in this life. So another thing people talk to me about a lot is my age. Aren't you a little bit too old to be living at the Maverick house? Too old to be on Impulsive or YouTube? Aren't you just too old in general? I don't know how to answer that question to be honest with you. I don't believe in age necessarily the way that it exists for other people, unless it's for like legal reasons. I don't think you're ever too old or too young to do anything. I miss like 10 years of my life due to my daily addiction with drugs. And um, I sometimes feel like I never really got a chance to live my early 20s or like mid 20s. So sometimes I feel like I'm kind of doing that now, like living this life that I never really gave myself a chance to in the past. I guess the way I like to look at it is at some point in your life, God willing, you'll be the same age as me or anyone else that you're looking at or seeing or talking to. So I guess instead of like commenting on age, make sure you're doing all the things right in your life so that you're doing as well as I am or as other people my age are doing when you get to be our age because everybody's gonna grow up eventually and everybody's gonna be older and you're gonna lose that youth. So just instead of feeling like you're young, and I'm old, do the right things in your life. Be all that you can be while you're young so that when you get to be my age, you have the same opportunities that I have. Why did you stop vlogging? Why has it been one year since I've made a video for this channel? That's a good question. I wanted to give it a shot. It just wasn't for me. I have so much other stuff going on. Now we have podcasts just like documentaries, videos, like the amount of content we have coming out in 2019 is just crazy. So much marketing and branding and, and brand partnerships and social media. So I will continue to make uh, content here and there when I see fit, whenever there's something kind of good to talk about or a video I wanna make. But for the most part, I will not be vlogging anytime soon. It is just not the way for me. And then finally, the other biggest one lately, all of these fucking people, Mike is annoying. We don't want him on the podcast. Mike isn't funny, blah, blah, blah. We see your comments, I see your comments listen like for every 10 haters or 10 you know mean comments or 10 mike's annoying comments there's literally a thousand or ten thousand messages dms you know people i talked on the street that just love our current dynamic they love the humor i bring and the more insightful um stuff that spencer brings to the table and love lp obviously so until that feedback stops until we stop getting this positive affirmation from everyone we talk to we're just gonna keep on pumping content we're gonna keep on having fire guests just making like the best possible show that we can be. Hopefully those of you who don't like me can learn to love me because I love all of you and we're just going to keep on trucking into 2019 with the best podcast in the world. Anyways, I just wanted to take this opportunity to clear the air, talk to you guys one-on-one. -on -one. I love each and every single one of you guys. 2019, we're going to be the biggest, fastest, strongest, smartest team on YouTube and we are so excited to share this year with you. If you want to subscribe to my channel, I may post a video in the future. Otherwise, leave comments below. Definitely uh, follow me on Instagram at Hey Big Mike and definitely subscribe to Impulsive. Love you guys so much. Appreciate you every single day. So just stick with us because I promise it's going to be a very fun ride. Love you guys. Take it easy out there. Peace.